today on Pat's Car Garage, the old girl, the fan clutch is uh, going bad, so the main engine cooling fan is no longer cooling the engine as much as it should, especially noticeable at idle, so uh, instead of replacing the fan clutch, which is the second time I do this, in, two, in 10 years, mind you, the last time this fan clutch went bad was 10 years ago, I'm going to do an electric fan conversion, so let's get started. Removing the fan clutch requires some specialized tools. You need a pulley holding tool, which stops the water pump pulley from turning, and you need a narrow wrench to reach the central nut on the fan clutch. There isn't enough room between the pulley and the fan clutch to get a normal thickness wrench in. It has helped me in the past to soak the nut in penetrating oil overnight before attempting to remove the fan clutch. Normally, the nut uses medium strength Loctite, which makes it hard to remove without first soaking. The nut is reverse threaded, so you will need to spin the nut clockwise to loosen it. Despite these precautions though, this time for some reason the nut would just not move. So I welded on an extension to my wrench to get it off. The next step is to remove the fan shroud, which is held on by two clips. Pulling the overflow hose off the thermostat helps make some room, but you'll make a mess everywhere since coolant will come pouring out. You won't lose too much, especially if you work fast. And if you don't, this is a high spot in the cooling system, so it'll stop after a few seconds. I will also remove the front auxiliary fans and their fan controller. I plan on having the DCC controller running the main fan for the air conditioning as well. I will leave the air conditioning part for another video, since I want to focus on engine cooling in this video. And I need to wait for the weather to warm up anyway. The front fans are held on with a few easy to reach nuts. Nothing difficult here. I'll quickly put the crossmember back on since I'm done with kneading it out of the way. Alright, so let me talk about the uh, fan controller that I've chosen. So basically this is a, uh, this is a custom fan controller uh, called the Delta Current Control. This one in particular is the 40 amp version. They have larger ones, but for the Mercedes, the 40 amp is enough. But basically, yeah, the reason I chose this is because it's a, a fully smooth controller. So this will step between zero and 100% fan speed, um, basically continuously, right? It's a PWM controller. So, you know, your fan will only turn as much as it really needs to, to keep the engine cool. Uh, it comes with its own sensor input. So, uh, you know, you jam a sensor into the radiator. I'm gonna show that in a second. And uh, yeah, you can adjust the thermostat. So there's a little multi-turn potentiometer here. In the kit, you have uh, the controller. You got a couple of harnesses. I already have the sensor installed. I'm gonna show you how that works. And you have a little bit of, uh, you can choose this uh, wiring loom. So I chose that to kind of help me out with that. Uh, you also have a couple of cable ties and cable hold downs and so on. Uh, and if you, this is meant to be mounted near the battery. If the battery is far away from where you mount this, for example, in the trunk, like it is in the Mercedes, uh, Brian, the guy who makes this um, controller, recommends you put a 470 microfarad capacitor between the input and ground. So this fairly cheap capacitor available basically everywhere uh, should be pretty easy to find. Yeah, so you need 470 microfarads, 35 volts, uh, an electrolytic cap, so you have to be careful which leg is plus and minus, but then yeah, you kind of just put this here. I'm going to show all that when it's done. Uh, now let's move on to the installation in the car. All right, and here I kind of showed how the sensor is jammed in. So uh, that is the sensor for the fan controller. You have to put it on the cold side of the radiator uh, and not on the warm side. This fan controller is calibrated to grab that signal from the cold side. You might have to break a couple of fins just to squeeze the sensor in, but once it's wedged in there, like the sensor is not going anywhere. So it's actually a surprising, a surprisingly stable fit. All right, so I fished uh, the wiring harnesses out. This wire here is the one that plugged into the fan controller. So now I've removed this. I think it'd be fun to one day maybe reverse engineer the signals on these wires to see what kind of, you know, input voltage. Because this is also a PWM controller. It's just, you know, you have to know kind of um, 
what voltages to put on these to get the PWM out of this because the front fans can also be uh, the auxiliary fans are also PWM but anyway that is for the future I'm gonna deepen the power wire on this big plug and then stash the plug somewhere and then I will use this power wire uh, to power the delta current controller and so these this is the harness for the auxiliary fans they have a nice beefy ground so I think I'm just gonna grab one of these grounds too and that'll be my uh, ground source for the uh, fan controller the electric fan I'm using is from a facelifted W202 so it will be a direct fit some of the later years of the W202 had the electric fan on certain engine combinations. I don't remember which exactly, but they are somewhat common. I was able to find two of these electric fans in junkyards. It's possible these fans would fit in different models as well, with only some minor modifications. Alright, and there you go. So I've got the uh, controller wired in. As you can see, the middle is the ground, got the capacitor in place, on the left is the input, and on the right is the output that goes towards the fan. The sensor is plugged into the first two pins, and now all I have to do is test it. Alright, it's been warm for the past few days, so I can finally give a review of the Delta Current Control controller. Uh, it's an amazing controller, even compared to the OEM Mercedes auxiliary fan controller, which is a PWM controller, this is way better. So the, the soft start on this is so butter smooth, you never feel the fan turn on. Whereas even on the Mercedes one, you could. Uh, when the, when the, ex, the auxiliary fans in front of the radiator turned on, it would dip the engine RPM because of the sudden current inrush. This gets rid of all of that. It's incredibly smooth how well this controls the fan speed. The multi-turn potentiometer per the instructions, if you just follow those you can correctly set the temperature. So I've got mine set to 90 degrees Celsius given that this car has an 87 degree Celsius on my particular installation. So the Mercedes electric fan for whatever reason the light pink and black wires aren't the polarity you expect. The light pink is negative and the black is positive weird but okay so I did end up just uh, cutting my uh, the harness where I had spliced the additional cables and flipped them around this is a fantastic controller the last thing I need to do to add to this is the air conditioning so again on Mercedes you have a variable displacement compressor right down there and these run all the time so if you just do the simple installation of running the compressor on signal to the controller your fans gonna run all the time despite not needing to however I found a solution for this and I will make a follow-up video uh, describing that solution just suffice it to say you can get this controller and you know this type of AC compressor to uh, work correctly together so the final thing I'll mention, and this is again specific to this car, I just uh, cut into the, uh, so that's the harness for the auxiliary fan controller, you can kind of loop it back up around, and I, I cut into this for the ground and power connections, so that is quite handy that it's right down here, and of course I have it fused in the fuse box in here, so if I open that up, the uh, what used to be the auxiliary fuse on a, I think it was a 30 amp, I stuck in a 40 amp uh, fuse and it's one of the two, either this one or this one, I forget which one. One of them is the secondary air injection pump, the other one's the uh, the fan. But yeah, so it's already fused, so no need to add any circuitry or add your own fuse. You can kind of just reuse the one for the auxiliary fans and there you go, problem solved. And the other advantage, the electric fan brings is well especially on the inline four cylinder engine look how much room there is to work on all the accessories i mean like this there's like there's like tons of work and spread my hand open all the way and there's room to access you know the alternator the power steering the air com uh, the air conditioning compressor the tensioner this is way better than having this enormous shroud just to hook up to the to the pulley super cool